All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche Captain Gabriel Landeskog. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Gabe, just the victory in general. Uh, it seems like you guys, one, play with extreme confidence with Gruby. I mean, even on Monday when you guys didn't play that well. And then secondly, uh, you're within a game here of being champions of the whole league. Overall thoughts, please. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a big difference being winning the President's Trophy and being the champions of the league, but I'm sure that's President's Trophy is what you meant. And for us, we know we got, we kind of got it in our own hands and we can control our own destiny. And I think, uh, obviously our, our goal from training camp was to, uh, to win the league and to win the, the President's Trophy and to make sure we had home ice all the way through the playoffs and, and, uh, you know, put ourselves in a position to win a hockey game tomorrow to, to do that uh, would be a you know uh, a big step in the right direction, and then you know take on the next challenge after that. Uh, overall, in the game, I thought we came out with a great jump and first period. Groovy didn't have much um, action in his end. I thought we did a good job of keeping it in the O zone and uh, turning pucks quickly in the neutral zone and, and really getting on the hunt. And um, you know it it was nice to get a couple of goals there early in the or kind of midway through the first and and. Uh, um, gave us a little bit of a cushion going in the second, but I thought overall uh, we kept playing well. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Yeah, Gabe, I mean, some fans look at the President's Trophy as, uh, you know, hey, be careful what you wish for, but you can't look at it like that as a player, right? You, you want to win no matter what's in front of you. And uh, by the way, the Avs were a President's Trophy winner in 2001, and that, that came in handy. So uh, fair to say you, you want that game tomorrow night pretty bad. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. I mean, that's like I said earlier, that was that was our goal in training camp. And, and here we are one went away from doing it. And and having said that, I, we know it's just step one. Um, and then a lot of work is going to start after that. And we know that playoffs is the playoffs. It's a completely new season and uh, you got to prove yourself once again. But yeah, no doubt. Uh, we know how important matchups are through the playoffs. And, and uh, if we're able to have um, you know, game sevens in our building and, and to start off series uh, in our building. I think that's uh, that's a big key for us. And and then, um, yeah, so we're excited for tomorrow. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, good. What have you thought of JT Comfer's performance the last two games? And what does it mean for your team to have him kind of getting going scoring wise? Yeah, I think it's it's big. Obviously, we, we need we need everybody to be going at this time of year and we need everybody to be playing well and well, obviously that goal that he scored for us to Vegas was, was a big one. And, and looking back on it, uh, real kind of determined play in front of the net. And, um, and, and now tonight scoring a hat trick, his first career hat trick, just super happy for him and, uh, works really hard. And is a guy who's kind of dedicated to his game and, um, always trying to find ways to get better. And I'm happy to see him getting rewarded tonight on the score sheet. But I haven't said that. I think, even the nights where he doesn't score, I think he's very effective for us. Power play, penalty kill, guy that can play in all situations. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Gabe, the uh, Ballerina or Cronky Sports or whoever announced today that the capacity was going to go up to over 7,000 fans at games in the playoffs. Could you just talk a little bit about that and how great it's going to be to have a bigger audience for those games? Yeah, it's going to be super exciting. We're, we're super Super happy to hear the news, and and, and obviously the four thousand that we have in here right now, um, you know, it, it means a lot for us, and it sounds a lot more than four thousand. So we're excited to almost double that and and uh, get some more people in for the playoffs. No doubt, it's uh, it's exciting, and uh, we definitely feel that support on the ice. And last one here for Gabe, Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Gabe, you guys are now three and zero in the last four games with Nate out of the lineup. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of confidence now that knowing that, you know, if he goes out in the playoffs or something, you guys can certainly still get the job done. Yeah. I mean, listen, Nate's an elite player and, and uh, he's, he's one of the best in the whole league. So we, obviously we miss him, but um, we've talked about this before when we've gone through injuries, it's next man up. And uh, we, we've got such a deep roster that we got guys that can fill spots and, and just go on you know, kind of fill those spots. So obviously we miss them, but um, yeah, we, we got the job done, job done tonight and I thought we'd play well. All right, thank you, Gabe. Thank you.
I will take questions for Avalanche for JT Comfer. Questions for JT? Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, JT, just what does it mean to you to kind of get that career check mark with the um, with the hat trick tonight? Yeah, I mean it was um, it's pretty cool. It's exciting to to you know get three and doing the game when we're pushing you know towards the end of the season um, and doing it home. But um, all three goals, I mean, were great plays by teammates. Miko on the first one, then uh, Taser on the second, and um, and uh, Bree B helped me here. Why am I spacing? And Val on the last one, getting it back to me. I mean, it was, um, you know, a great job by those guys. Made it real easy for me. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. JT, after Monday's game, Grubauer and Bednar, and I forget who else, we're talking about the fact that you guys didn't play well on Monday and you needed to bounce back and regain your game. Obviously, that happened tonight in a big way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I thought it was right from the start. Um, you know, we really limited their shots in the first. I don't know what they ended up with, but, um, you know, we we still have some stuff we can improve on and continue going into the playoffs. But overall, it's a good effort tonight. Arif Dean, Mile High Sports. JT, going back to that game Monday, you had that game winning goal late in the uh, in the third or sometime in the third period, and then you come out and score a hat trick today. Can you just talk about getting that scoring touch heading into the playoffs and how much that you know helps with your confidence going into obviously a playoff series? Yeah, I mean it's it's good for the confidence to see him go in and especially in an important time of the season. Um, you know, I pride myself on playing, you know, big and big games and I wanna, you know, be a big part of the run this year. All right, thank you, JT. Thank you. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar, Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jared, I know you said uh, after Monday you, got, you didn't really love your guys' game. You must have loved the response tonight. Just what did what did you like about your team's performance even for the 60 minutes? Well, I thought we had a good start. Um, checked the right way, didn't give up a lot, um, even through all three periods. I think. Uh, you know, the first 40 minutes obviously was the key and, and we were doing a good job getting above pucks and I thought we did a good job uh, bottling things up in the neutral zone, not not allowing them to come over our line with any speed, um, had some big blocks. I mean, guys were committed to the checking game tonight and we get rewarded at the other end from doing the right things. We kept putting pucks in and getting in on the four check and guys made some plays to, to get us a lead and JT Confer had himself a night and you know, it, it turned out to be a, a good victory for us. And, you know, we'll uh, put it away and move on for tomorrow. Yeah, speaking of JT Comfer, like a guy like that who, who maybe isn't having, you know, as much scoring this season as, as he would want to, just how much confidence does that give a guy heading into, you know, what postseason in a couple of days? Well, I think it can spark him for sure because I've really liked his game as of late. I thought he's been skating real well and hounding pucks. And he has to be a tenacious player to have success. And when he's skating and moving like he has over the last couple of weeks, and then, um, you know, good things will happen for him. He's been he's been getting more involved and, uh, you know, he's been a little bit snake bitten. And I, I think uh, you, you, you get a night like tonight and hopefully it can give him some confidence to keep doing the right things and knowing that he'll get rewarded for it eventually. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, you've kind of been able to to not play Gruby in back-to-back -back games this year. Is Are you kind of looking at a situation now where that would be something you consider for tomorrow? No. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. I was going to ask you kind of the same question, Jared. Uh, did you think about pulling Grubauer at all after two and maybe saving him for tomorrow? Yeah, I thought about it, but it's his night, and you know, Johansson's been good for us. And um, I think it's a whole, you know, you got to be fair to Johansson too. You know, he's been doing a good job with his preparation. He knows it's his game tomorrow. Um, we get the lead. I, I think that, uh, you know, Gruby deserves the right to finish that game, and, and um, JJ's ready to go for tomorrow. And we play the way we we can play in front of them, then we'll give ourselves a good chance to win. And he, he did a nice job in L.A. for us, getting us the victory. And um, we're going to need uh, to make sure these guys are sharp, too, going into the playoffs. So I wanted to uh, kind of leave it where it was and we'll go go with our original game plan. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. 
Jared, I guess my two parters now, just one question, because I was going to ask the same thing, but in regards to uh, the, the crowd at, uh, at Ball Arena and the playoffs, they're going to extend that to over 7,000 fans. Could you just talk about that and the excitement it's going to be for you guys to have that many people in the crowd for those games? I think it's fantastic. I think, you know, even uh, when we got even just a handful of fans in, it was great. When we went to 4,000 plus, it's it's been, you know, really good for us. I think it gives us a boost. The guys have been playing hard at home. Um, we enjoy playing here at ball and in front of our fans and, and putting on a show. And uh, to be able to almost double that now for the playoffs, I think is a, is a huge step forward. And we're looking forward to it. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, Coach, just want to clarify, did I hear you right saying you're going to start JJ tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I guess a lot of fans might be surprised the uh, president's trophy on the line. Um, do, you, do you really think it's best to go with a guy like him? Or I guess yeah. you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. He, he's played well for us and he's been good. And we haven't played Groovy in any back-to-backs all year. We're not going to um, – risk an injury or put him in a position where he hasn't been it's not something that he normally does and and as far as i know that first round of the playoffs there's no back-to-backs and um you know we want him to be rested and ready to go for the playoffs he's done his job now it's time for someone else to go get us a win last two here for jared peter Baugh, the athletic Good, Jared. Two things. Um, one, just what did you think of Samuel Gerrard and, and his return tonight? And then two, is it possible Nathan McKinnon can play tomorrow or is it safe to say he's he's done until the playoffs? Yeah, he's not going to play tomorrow. Uh, I thought Sam was good. You know, I thought maybe a little rusty early. Some of his puck touches weren't as clean as they normally are, but he did some good things for us and uh, defended well and all the things we come to expect from him. He was good on the breakouts. Um, good in the rush coverage. I thought it was a real good first game back after missing that kind of time with an injury. Last one here, Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey again, just uh, during the third period, I noticed a couple shifts. You had Alex Newhook out on that top line in between Gabe and Nico, just mixing things up and kind of seeing how things were going or what was the, what was the um, thoughts on that? Well, that line's playing against Kopitar and uh, Kempe and Athanasu, which is their top line. I think, uh, you know, you get an opportunity when you're leading like that to put uh, the kid against uh, one of the elite centers in the league in Kopitar and have him uh, compete against him and his line for a little bit. I think it's a good opportunity and it helps the kid grow. So, um, you know, just trying to get him a little bit more ice time here tonight than what he would have normally had uh, or what he'd normally been getting, put him in some different situations and see how he handles it. All right. Thank you, Jared. All right. Thank you.